I believe Darren McCracken and Charlie Hayes can now sit back and watch the form of the pairs in the second semi-final. It's Tasmania against South Australia. Let's see who's playing. And for Tasmania, it's Wayne Manson and Chris McKibben. Wayne Rudiger of South Australia is an Australian under-25 player. His skip is Ray Tume. And Ian Shubak, a couple of very experienced skips on the rink. Certainly, uh, Ray Tume, he's played over 300 games for South Australia. Chris McKibben, 234-odd, very experienced skips. And the South Australian pair in the quarterfinals beat the New South Wales pair, who are Australian reps, Dupre and Johnston. Big upset. Wayne Rudiker, the young lead Australian under-25 squad member, as you mentioned, he could be the difference, I think, in this match. Well, joining Ian in commentary will be Steve Boylan. Wayne Rudiger will lead off South Australia in this semi-final. Could be an interesting tussle between Rudiger and Wayne Manson from Tasmania. Two bowl pairs. Very important to get a good start. Come on, Wayne. Pull away. A couple of metres short. Wayne Manson. The players are electing to play opposite hands at the moment. Start, mate. Better start from Manson. Just touch behind. Couple of feet. Rudy up. Now there might be a generation gap problem here, shall we? <laughs> yes, Steve. I originally thought Wayne Rudiger was the son of uh, the great interstate player from South Australia, Ron Rudiger. He's the Let grandson of Ron. Pretty good. Wayne's far. Just down to that, mate. Only just out of chop, drop a couple of feet. Wayne's the greenkeeper at the Grange Bowling Club in Adelaide. His father, Kim, is a top bowler in Berry Bowling Club in the Riverland, South Australia. So he's certainly bred to bowl. It's a bit like horse racing, is it? <laughs> he's got good bloodlines. <laughs> well, that's overcorrected there from Wayne Manson. Just a bit of a light breeze fluttering away here at Moama today. Conditions pretty good, Chewy. Very good, Steve. Uh, surprising you mentioned the two leads electing to play opposite sides of the rink. Wayne Rudiker played the backhand. His skip now, Ray Tume, is playing the forehand side. Looks to be a little heavy. Nervous start first end from all players to date. Shouldn't be too nervous, these guys. Chris McKibben, 200 plus games for very low stance on the mat. Short step, virtually a fixed stance from Chris. He's he been seems, around a long while. Seems to bowl from uh, basically between his legs instead <laughs> of around, as most bowlers do. It's where the bowl's finished that counts, Steve. Well, I can tell you it works. Well done, Chris. Great shot. One down, Ray, just in front. so important for a player's confidence to draw a shot early on in a match. Ray Tume, he's played over 300 games for South Australia. He's got the state record for the most number of representative games. Overs and unders. It's early days, but this is the type of shot that you need to make in a match. Chris McKibben, he's holding one. He's just drawn the shot. A lot of players relax and don't add a second because they know they're on the scoreboard. These shots must count. Well, he's not. And they're the free kicks, you might say. But it's one shot to the Tasmanian pair of Manson and McKibben. And they're on the board in this 21 in semi-final. Mark Strotschneider looks on, the singles player for Tasmania. He's here barracking for his teammates today. Start up. Well Good start from Manson. Wayne Rudiger struggled a bit the first end. You're looking to knuckle down in this match. Well, 
it's a wayward opening bowl once again from Wayne Rudica. <laughs> a chance for two for Manson. Very deliberate delivery, Wayne Manson. Takes his time, unfortunately. <laughs> That's what happens when you run, tense up at all. Try too hard, invariably you drop short. Wayne Rudica, well balanced at the point of delivery. Doesn't seem to have corrected his weight. He's still wide, heavy. Touch of nerves, perhaps? Well, no doubt about that, Steve. <laughs> Probably take a couple of ends, but there's no correction at all there from Wayne Rudica. Be very disappointed with that. Corporate area, popular place to be. Marker Chris Young holds up two for Tasmania. Tasmania with a blue disc on their bowls. Matching shirts. Very unusual technique, Chris McKibben. Holding one. It's certainly two, but there's a lot of room and someone, the ability of and the experience of Ray Chum, you would think, would nail this. Got a good, si tell. good siding bowl there, Steve. The, the shot bowl on the right of the, the jack. That's the bowl that Ray Chum will be drawing to beat. Yeah, land him, Ray. Yep. Certainly cut one, maybe one two later. out. A change of hand now for McKibben. Bowls very low to the green. No backswing at all. Just a little push delivery. Tactically, most players would play a player with that technique on long ends. Keep coming. Yeah, well done. That's two. It's slower greens in Tasmania as well. Are you pushing them along with that stance he's got? Yes, well, over the years, uh, Chris has no doubt grooved his delivery. Started playing bowls when he's 22 years of age. He's 49 now. Oh, great shot, good. Jim draws the shot. So one it is. The South Australians are now on the board. We're all square. Wayne Manson. Very deliberate. Well balanced. Doesn't come up too soon. It's good on a fast green, not to be Great too starter. quick with your delivery. Okay. This Excellent is good. Job. Great shot. White here. Yeah. Pressure is on Wayne Rudiker. There's a couple of Australian selectors uh, <laughs> in the grandstand watching this young under 25 squad member. Hasn't played in the under 25 Australian team as yet, but he's in the squad. So that's the first step. And obviously, he'd be aware that there are state and Australian selectors watching this match. Pretty good lead bowls. One on the jack, one just behind. And a counter. Rudiger. 24 years of age, Wayne Rudiger. Just over correcting. Well, that is. May have been trying to rest the bowl or trail the jack, but it's not a very good lead bowl from Wayne Rudiger. I suppose it'd be fairly difficult to keep that out of your head that there's selectors there watching. Try and concentrate on your game. It's sort of a, a distraction, isn't it? Well, a lot depends on the player's attitude, Steve, even at club or district level. Um, some players relish the opportunity to impress selectors. I love the big occasion, and that's the type of players you want playing for your state or your country. Players that get nervous 
the bigger the occasion, well, uh, can let the team down. Chris McKibben playing the forehand. Well, that's three shots to Tasmania. Ray Jume, he's got some problems. He's got a great drive, but that bowl top of screen is blocking the drive. So there's no way that he can attack. Probably just try to draw close with his first bowl. He's in the target area. Oh. Wow, what a great attempt from Ray Tume. Two or three. Might go to the back side. Okay. <laughs> Chris McKibben has got three shots. He doesn't want four. He said he might go to the back, cover the trail. It's going to be very difficult for Ray Tume to get the jack back. But I'm just wondering the value of him actually trailing it himself on this hand. Well, that's a very, corner for four. It's a very defensive yep. shot from Chris McGibbon. I don't think Ray Tume can get hold of the jack with that much weight. He needs to play exactly the same bowl. Marginally wider. Difficult shot. So I don't think it was a good choice from McGibbon there. Well, there we go, really Ray. put the pressure on, but Ray Tume's played this pretty good. Have a look at this. Oh, he's unlucky. He's unlucky, but Very still unlucky. three down, and that's the problem because the Tasmanians advance now to a lead of six shots to two. As the crowd looks on, the Tasmanians are in control. Four shot margin. Well, mate, you've got to run the journey. Yeah, he's got to run there, Wayne. Really good, really needs to grab the advantage here, doesn't he? Well, that's right, Steve. He's had five ends plus two ends of practice. It's pretty good conditions, a little bit breezy at times, but certainly on a scale of one to ten, you'd have to say conditions here, eight or nine out of ten, you can oh, get really? much better than this. Again, just dropping a metre and a half short. So there's obviously pressure on Wayne Rudica. We look at Wayne Manson's grip on the bowl towards the fingers, not back in the palm, which is good on a fast green. Played the other side of the rink with his first bowl, now switching to the forehand, so could not blame Wayne if he fails with this bowl. A little bit slower perhaps on that side. Also a good grip on the bowl. Keeps the body and the head moving up through the delivery. Is it now? Good. I might have just run through for shot. The former Bowls Australia president on the right, Sonny Downs on the on the left. On the white shirt is Steve Sahoy from Western Australia. He's a Australian selector, state selector in the middle for Victoria. Who will look on? Ray Laycock, who's uh, played for Australia. McKibben. underneath it, Chris. Oh, that may be lucky enough for Chris McKibben. He had the shot anyway, if it had missed, but promoted Wayne Manston's, Manston's bowl in for one. So Ray Tume is going to the mat down once again. Well, things are happening for Tasmania, aren't they? They're playing pretty well and, and a touch of luck, I suppose. Different Steve has been the leading of Wayne Manson. Tume trying to promote yeah, the short run. bowl. Good oh, that shot. may have made two shots. Wonderful bowl, Ray Tume. Well, McKibben doesn't waste any time. He's on the bat, ready to go. Down two. Well, he kind of likes this. I can tell he's got a spring in his step, but he'll need to land the bowl and stay. That's what he did. Or 
was it ran a bit far. Still, right? still be two, it is. Ray Toom, a chance now. Draw another one for three. Doesn't want to trail the jack. There's a blue disc bowl just behind the head. Not there. So two it is though. And they narrow the gap, the South Australians. Two the difference. Interested crowd here with 21 ends to play in this semi-final. We've played six and two the difference. As Wayne Riddiger tries to get as close as he go. can. Ready? Finished about a metre short. Coming, mate. He's played this pretty played. well around the front. Good start. It's good. Rudiger needs a metre on his first bowl. Good there, mate. But not quite. McKibben instructs Manson to change his hand. There's a danger of knocking his opponent's bowl in. So he'll go the clear road. Tasmania at the moment and I suppose the your argument surely becomes mm, more sounder as the game goes on this you know lead bowls I was not doubt about that Steve see the scoring end by end there two and a three on the fourth and the fifth end for Tasmania uh, killer blow Ray Tune played a wonderful conversion shot on the previous end to score two He'll need to do it again. He's one down. So I think that, that that's tells this match. You know, Ray Toom has played some conversion yeah, shots. Keep them in it. But without those, the Tasmanians would be a long way in front because they are dominating the match at the moment, aren't they? Wayne Manson, Steve, he's been the difference up front. Wayne Rudica from South Australia struggled. Chris McKibben, he'd be just hoping his lead could keep it going. Chris is playing most ends with his holding shot. You like better off out there or still there? I like it up here, eh? Keep it tight. You bounce off the wall there. Sit him. Not a bad call from Wayne Rudica. The percentages are on the forehand coming in with a bit of weight. It's almost impossible to draw the shot. So he'll need to try and convert with a little bit of weight, promote it's one of the short white disc bowls. Looks to be too narrow. Can't, cannot do it every end, Ray Tume. 18 inches you're in. Now Chris McKibben. It's another one of those free kicks we spoke about. Yes, he needs to make this bowl count. He's got probably 60 centimetres of room or a couple of feet in the old scale. So really, you would expect to draw this. Coming. He gets a clear right here. I think he's fine. Well done, Chris. Yes, that's two. And the Tasmanians continue on their merry way. And they lead 8 4. Probably looks a long way for the players. And that'd be Chewy, 30 metres. Just short of that, Steve. 32 and a half metres is the maximum distance on this rink at Moama. Matt's up three metres. So we're looking at just over 29 metres in length. And Wayne Manson, I don't know why they've changed the length. They've been going so well, but he's uh, this would be the longest end of the match. I thought you would have given me that. 
30 metres. I mean, it's a bit <laughs> like a, you know, one of those little putts for par when it's only six inches away. Well, it's two and a half feet away, Steve. I would never give you that. <laughs> well, this is a better opening, and this is one of the dangers for Wayne Manson changing the length. He's far with his first bowl, and Wayne Rudiger, who's really been struggling, has got a very good opening bowl. So do you think that was just a slip up, throwing the jack a bit too far? Yes, on a tiff dwarf green, Steve, has been... The jack does run very freely. Uh, there's no way that... Uh, Chris McKibben try. wanted that jack up near the tee, which is two metres from the ditch. Now, all of a sudden, Wayne Rudiker could draw a second shot. It'd be the first time in the match that he would have held two against his lead. Hardly drawn the shot on any end. Change of good length, albeit good. only a couple of metres, has made all the difference. Oh, very good. It's two. Well, there's a famous supporter of bowls in Australia, Jack Haynes. Hasn't been too well of late. Follows every televised bowls match around the country. He's got a collection of badges. What's happening here, Shuey? What, uh... Well, Chris McKibben, he'd love to trail the Jack, Steve, but he hasn't got anything close. It's fraught with danger. He needs a close bowl first, but he's going for the jugular. This is fine if you get the Jack. Danger if he misses. Of him. Close. Oh, brilliant. Two down, three up. Well, that can hurt. To think that if he'd missed, the tune would have got another one. But as you mentioned, to reach through this was a touch of danger. He needed Jack and he got it. Unfortunately, the Jack just jammed on the bowl. It may be one and a measure for the other two, but big trouble if Chris McKibben had missed. Pressure back on Ray Tume. Oh, good result. Oh, whoops. Stiff, <laughs> well, I suppose it doesn't matter how you get him, shall we? <laughs> doesn't matter if he's one down. The head favours Still a draw, right. just as near he knows. It's one to Tasmania. Wayne Manson would not be asking his skip to draw wide of the jack if he was down. Can you tell? Well, anyone for shot, I think. Ray Tume will be playing way nice, Ray. Steve. I think all you can do so is just, just touch, out to touch you that. Out. Blue disc bowl touch goes out them. in this direction. Them, it? Cannot play too much weight. He was waiting for you to draw the picture. <laughs> Could do it. I, I think it'll jam, though. It's the same call. He's got to be careful not to play too much weight. He does not want to move the jack. I'm trying to make contact with his own bowl to push the blue disc bowl out. Just needs to touch it. Ooh, that was close. Who has got the shot? That's the big question. Boxing kangaroo on the bowl. Is it all? Gauge out to try and get a touch on the bowl and the jack and then go around the other side. See if there's any contact. Ooh, he's moved it in a bit, could be one to white. <laughs> Better change the scorecard, Chewy. Ray Chew may have been fortunate to miss. Always a good idea to go back to the original measure. Max Davy, the umpire, saying so, one white. Boylan one, Shoeback nil. <laughs> and it's one to South Australia. Don't get much closer than that. And three the difference. Manson. With his stand out of the four at the moment. He's accidentally rolled the jack, Steve. Probably a little metre or so longer than previous lengths. 29 metres. Done. Last time that Wayne Manson altered the length, the South Australians scored. So maybe this slight change again may allow 
Wayne Rudiker the opportunity. Just struggling a bit, isn't he? <laughs> yes, it's it's a terrible game when you're not playing at your peak. As we mentioned earlier, there's a couple of Australian selectors at the grandstand. You're trying hard to impress. Great journey, mate. It's on a good angle. Well, it's not really that close to the jack, but it's good enough for two shots for Tasmania. Actually, Wayne Rudiker, Steve, I think he'd be well advised to try the other side of the rink. It's a slightly wider side. The bowls will come back a little bit more. Hasn't really been correcting too well throughout the match. He needed to lose a metre and a half weight. He's actually played more weight. So perhaps he'd be Skip could, Ray Tum could suggest he could swap sides. Well, there's a danger that this match slipping away from the South Australian pair. Very important this end. They wouldn't want to drop another multiple score, would they? Well, Steve, they've dropped four doubles already and a triple, so gee, they're getting them in lumps. And that's number three coming in. Chris McKibbins, once again, Ray Tume standing on the mat thinking, I need to draw this. As you mentioned, Steve, the game will slip away almost on this end. Seven behind at the moment, with only 11 ends remaining. All right. Negotiate the front, he's a chance. Don't leave without it. Oh, he's a Good great shot. player, Ray Tune. It's by two, I think. Well, three down to two up. All of a sudden, Chris McKibben has got some pressure on him. Down two. See the conversion powers of McKibben. On the button. Down two. He's close to oh. Jack. Oh, ah. well, that could be a disaster. disaster. Three near, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that conversion shot of Ray Tume could be the difference in this match. If South Australia were to win this game, this particular end, and that last shot from Ray Tume, three down to two up, who would have thought that this would be for a maximum count of four? Come on. This would be good enough for four, and you could right. put a ring around a end number 11 for South Australia as they pick up the maximum score of four shots. Surprisingly, they're back in it. Three the difference. South Australia. And Wayne Rudiger. Ray Tube. Back in this. Three the difference. Rudiger leads them off. Good start, Wayne. Good. Amazing, Steve, that to think that on two occasions Wayne Manson has rolled the jack to a different length and dropped one on the first time. It wasn't too costly, but the previous end, four shots. All play. To South Australia. It's like the fire brigade are having a bit of practice this morning too, Jimmy. <laughs> Very warm day at Moama. Hot, blustery conditions we've had all week. It hasn't rained for about a month. Keeper. Wow. Right. Keeper was saying Ken Kiley was. Uh, cut this rink Steve and only got a handful of grass off the rink prior to the match so it's very dry Gonna make it oh two to blue well our market Chris Young indicated to the spectators in his opinion it was two blue thought that uh, Ray Tume preferred to go full length jack rather than the short length. Ray, Ray Tume can play any length. Play another whopper, right? He's played another uh, one, two shot. down to three up. What a conversion shot from Ray Tume. Yeah, it's still out. Well, previous end, he went two down to 
three up. And again, two down to three up, and he's still got one to play. So could we see another four shots? This will be Kibben's opportunity. No holes. Oh, straight through everything. Yeah, happy with that. Still three. It doesn't matter. It's a drilled shot. Either hand. Chance for four. <laughs> well, all well, of I've a got sudden. to tell you, they picked up four last <laughs> end. All of a sudden, Ray, Wayne Rudiger, he's got a very confident tone of voice. He's probably thrilled at the way his skipper's dragged him out of oh, trouble. Right, all the way. Well, this is for number four, Ray oh, Tume. What a player. Not too far. Yeah, good. And no target. Oh. Unbelievable turnaround. What's McKibben do here? He could lose the lead of the match, Steve, if he fails here. He's just going to try and draw close, or does he play weight? Third shot would be very handy. Only drop two. Don't risk dropping four. He's going for all or nothing. Nothing is a result. Believe it or not, South Australia looked, well, Looked like they were going to get annihilated in this match as they trailed 12 shots to five. They picked up a four on the last end and they're measuring for another one. Yep. And it is. Well, two right. fours right. in a row and they've hit the front. Well, the wind picks up a little and the spectators get a lot more interested in this match as South Australia hit the front by one. Two fours in a row, shoey. All the way, Wayne. The it's maximum count. Here. And Look not late. unexpected. Wayne Rudiger now has come good. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's off him. He was having a nightmare of a game up front. His skip, Ray Tume, has played two of the best bowls of the match. And now, <laughs> who would have thought Wayne Manson would have been under pressure? Well, 5 12 to 13 12. In Two ends. A Rudiger. Side toucher with his first. Good. South Australia holding two shots. Sweaty palms. Is there a danger of a sense of panic coming from the Tasmanians, <laughs> well, do you think? Chris McKibben, Steve, he's had no prep at all except for the last two ends. And he's failed to save on both occasions, so now they probably they are under a considerable pressure. <laughs> It's been an interesting match. Look at the way that this game's unfolded. And it's the big key to it all. A lens 11 and 12, two fours to hit the front. As you mentioned, Steve, after 10 ends, it was 12 5. Good enough for three shots. Chris McKibben. <laughs> what's happened? His last two ends. Needs to draw a second shot. Ones don't hurt, multiple counts do. Yeah, well done, Chris. That's a good ball. Guy, right? Second shot. Just the one. I like it for a second. We lose our ball, how many down? <laughs> uh, could be three. Maybe four. If the blue yeah. disc bowl at three o'clock goes out, so that means Chris McKibben cannot play too much weight. Or if he does, he must not be narrow. 
Look to trial the jack or rest the bow. Right, mate, right in the back. South Australians add another one. And their lead now is two shots. Amazing turnaround. The Tasmanians in this match need to try and stop this charge from South Australia. <coughs> Trail by two. On the eye. Approximately 28 metres being rolled on this 14th end. Now we find Wayne Manson struggling a little bit for weight. Both bowls just over a metre short. Wayne Rudiger. The Grange Bowling Club started playing bowls when he was 18. Played 60 games for the state. Good. A bright future ahead of him. Yeah, mate. Barely that. It's a wonderful correction from Rudica. Now can Manson do something similar? Motor going. All of a sudden, this game has changed dramatically. Unusual now for Ray Tume to be going to the mat. One and two up. Game has completely turned around. All right. Punch it in for another. In the belly. Good, good. Things are happening. Is that Jack Hyde? Yes. Time to perhaps Chris McKibben have a big drive and change the pattern of the game through the gap. Looks to be drawing on the backhand while he's going forehand. <laughs> Coming around. Needs to open the head up so he could at least. That's, no, that hasn't helped much at all. My weight was alright, wasn't it? Still yeah, two down. Good. team if they can draw another one here that will really pile the pressure on Chris McKibben I didn't have to take any off good yeah still out well, I'll be just trying to rest on the white disc bowl alongside the jack Chris McKibben it's two down oh he's got a spring in the step it's always a good sign Need something to happen here. Oh, well, well, that is a good shot. Two down and one up from the Tasmanian skipper. And there's life in him yet, I'd imagine. He needed to reach. Got the edge of the bowl onto the jack, and that was a Take great result bit, for him. And now won the difference in the match. 14-13, South Australia in front. So the South Australians slender lead McKibben and Manson this is Wayne Manson's bowl leader well played this is great lead interesting tussle well that's the way Wayne Manson started the match and after that great conversion shot from his skip on the previous end he's bounced back now and nailed the jack so pressure back on Wayne Rudica. Breeze has picked up the players now bowling into a little bit of a headwind. So that's something they've got to take into account. Wayne Manson, can he repeat his first delivery? Not 
Should be good enough for two shots. Right. Wayne Rudica, the grandson of one of the great South Australian interstate representatives, Ronnie Rudica. That's a good attempt from Rudica. Keen South Australian supporter and Australian selector there, Errol Bungie. And young Wayne Rudica plays three for Drew Bungie, Errol's son, former Australian player Errol Bungie, now national selector. No doubt watching and hoping that the South Australians would get up in this match. And also a keen eye on the young Australian under 25 squad member, Wayne Rudiger. Coming well. This looks close. Well done, Chris. Uh, that's a good shot. Now, will we see some attack? He's got a great drive. He hasn't used it in the match yet, Steve. He's played a couple of brilliant conversion shots with controlled weight. And that's what he's attempting to do. He's really? down at two. It has been a seesawing match. Well, he's got two bowls behind, so what does Chris yeah, McKibben do? You can just sit on him and split him. He peels the two bowls off. <laughs> We're only one down, aren't we? Yes. I might go to the back, mate. Yeah, he does play a very conservative game, doesn't he? Yes, well, he's probably trying to work <laughs> out what his opposite skip is going to do. <laughs> the bowls are a bigger target than the jack. So it's probably a better tactic to draw another shot because those two blue bowls near the jack will both go if Ray Tume drives at the head. Well, Ray Tume, he's getting on the mat, looks to be maybe playing just controlled weight. Easier to go straight. Well, it's hard to second guess your opponent, but I would have thought that given Toombs' first bowl, if he was going to drive, he would have with that. And that's two to Tasmania. And a new leader by one. Interesting crowd here at Moama. If you don't know where we are, we're on the border of New South Wales and Victoria the Murray. Across the river from Echuca. Most people would know Echuca very well. Oh, it's a wonderful Bye. start from Wayne Manson. Shortest end of the match. About 26 metres. What are we? Northwest of Melbourne, are we? Is it a bit right? Yes, Steve. Two and a half hours drive. Almost due north. north. Good. Lovely straight. drive through the Victorian countryside too, on the way up, I must say. But the action here is a plenty. We've had the lead change several times. Tasmanians back in front. They now hold one. I must say, Steve, Wayne Manson, he's led consistently well throughout the match. If it wasn't for two brilliant conversion shots from oh, Ray Chun, he scored eight shots in two ends. The game could well and truly be over, but Manson unfortunately just hanging his second bowl too wide has allowed the young South Australian player Wayne Rudiker to, well, he looks to be narrow. Missed opportunity. Doesn't look too happy. Backhand shot for the Kibben, holding one. Well, he's afraid to get out too wide and pay the penalty. Went too narrow, didn't want to turn the white disc bowl in. It's a bad shot because his opponent will be playing the, the other side. And if Ray Tume could trail the jack, he'll go from one down to three up. So Chris McKibben has left the shot there for Ray Tume. He's played two brilliant conversion shots already. Trail of the jack would be three. Wow, he's still one down. Oh, it was close. I was very uh, Bowl in front. surprised actually to see McMinn playing. The I'd draw it there. 
<laughs> to Arson. me, it looked like Coming the other way was a bit better. Tight. No yeah. danger. It's heard you, Steve. He switched to the forehand. Yeah. It's always a good idea to play with your opposition or with your opponent. Sum up what they're going to play and play that same side. Otherwise, you can get into big trouble. All your team's bowls are on one side of the rink. Wow, this is a wonderful yeah, draw shot from McKibben. Perfectly positioned. That will force Ray Hume to draw. Not happy. <laughs> well, there's a lot of unhappy people here today, Chewy. <laughs> Tasmanians hold two. Hume, the master of conversion so far in this match. He's played this pretty well again right. too. He's going to right. make it. Oh, it's just fell out. But I think it's good enough. It is. And well played from the South Australian <laughs> skipper. And the scores are level. The breeze has dropped off a little. It's the slight breeze intermittently in this match. Had a bit gusty a while ago, but it's... Start here, Wayne. It's all happening down on the green at the moment. As the scores are level. Great. great start from Wayne Rudiger. It's his best start of the match. He's got a camel engraved on his bowl. So started a bit slowly. <laughs> He's coming home now. Got the humps out. <laughs> That's his best opening bowl of the match. Front toucher. Try, mate. Quite there. Swing over. Wayne Rudica is a greenkeeper by trade. He started off at the Holfast Bay Bowling Club. Now he's the greenkeeper at the Grange Bowling Club in Adelaide. One of the strong clubs in Adelaide. Good Grange. Change too, Wayne. Yeah, well played. Oh, that's brilliant leading. I'll follow that. What happens when a, your opponent's got a resting toucher on the jack? Do you just try and get as close as you can, or do you play with a little bit of weight to try and disturb it a bit to give yourself a chance? I mean, what's what's the plan? Well, if you cannot get the shot, Steve, you must get sh second right. shot, and Wayne Manson has failed. Well, there's only six ends remaining, Steve, and it's 15 apiece on the scoreboard. So a multiple count now. We've seen some big scores in this match multiple score now almost be enough to win the match Ray Tume he's been under all sorts of pressure this is drawing for number yeah, three right. well, what's he do take the putt here well, McKibben must get second shot is he run well he's <laughs> never know with that stance on the mat you would think he'd be drawing only a one bowl target he must defend you're right Want to drop more than one? Around him, Chris. Oh, no, I didn't. Well, he's three down now. Oh, good. South Australia scored another four. Up. Yep, that's right. Well, the crunch time for Chris McKibben with his next bowl. Great tune may go behind here, Steve. Three's enough at the moment. McKibben has the best back bowl, bottom of screen, blue disc bowl. Ray Tume, if he could pass that bowl. Oh, man. Uh, Who'd want to be a four. skip? <laughs> Gee, the bowl fell over too, you know. It could be four. He's played one on the forehand, McKibben. Now he's shaping up on the backhand. It's slightly different speed. It could be four down for the third time in the match. Oh, he's got a spring in the step. Down four. Even coming, Doesn't want to drop Even more than one, here. and I think he's done it. Oh, well, that is a good shot under pressure. So it's one to South Australia as the Tasmania was looking down the barrel at four, and he played a great draw shot to save a lot of pain, let me tell you, this time in the match. They pick up one, and they lead by one. Four ends to go. Won the difference. Didn't seem to like that. 
walked away. Well, see why. He just hasn't We've been consistent with his weight control. That bowl has gone three and a half metres past the jack. It's a fairly short end playing at 25 metres. So, it's a slight tail breeze, but only the breeze is not strong enough to carry a bowl an extra three metres. Very hard to pick a winner in this match, Steve. Oh. <laughs> Possible. Anything could happen from here on in. It's uh, skips have been saving well. Ray Tume, brilliant conversion shots. Wayne Manson has led consistently well in the match. Wayne Back Rudiger, it's Wayne. been hot and cold. That's better. Yeah, well, sure we, uh, you talk about that. After 10 ends, South Australia trail by seven. After 13 ends, they led by two. After 16 ends, it was all square. And now, won the difference. Had so many multiple counts, Steve. And that's an indication of some loose bowls around the head. As once again, there's really only one bowl within a metre. Started off okay until the fourth end, and two and a three. Then a couple of doubles after that. Look at those couple of doubles again. Two maximum counts of four. Wow. It's a cricket score. Four shots is the maximum. Two bowl pairs. and Generally, you would average one and a half shots per end. It's all right. Yeah, we'll play. 31 shots scored in 17 ends. Almost an average of two an end. McKibben, he's under pressure. Two down. Nothing close. He saved last time, the previous end. He was four down. He got second shot. And he's got second shot once again. visualising a delicate touch on the jack for a count of three. Swinging around pretty good. Good, right? Where's that bowl in relation to Kitty, his shot bowl? Half a bowl in front. Well, Chris right part there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chris on your own, only got to be laid over. Chris McKibben, he's only 30 centimetres short with his first bowl. He only has to beat his first bowl to get the shot. What does he do? Switches to the other side. Playing a little bit of weight through his short bowl. It's a very low percentage shot. Yep. Shot right. It is one, though, to South Australia. To the margin. People enjoying this match here. Certainly as much as we are, to the difference. And this is the most important end of the match for Tasmania. They trail by two with three ends Great to play, again, including this one. Well, Steve, oh, that's a wonderful start from Rudica. I'll go out on a limb here, Steve, and say South Australia will win the match. They've won the last three ends in a row. It's the first time that any side has strung three ends on the trot. She's a brave man, Shuey. I mean, they lead by two and they got a front toucher. I wasn't really expecting you to call Tasmania. Well, <laughs> Chris McKibben, well, he's Fine. been under a little bit of pressure of late. He hasn't responded. Ray Tume has throughout the match. And fortunately for South Australia, Wayne Rudiker in the last few ends has nailed the jack a couple of times. Certainly takes the pressure off Ray Tume. It's another good one. Good or is it a bad one? Oh. Didn't even make a target. Get close, mate. Yeah, the scenario I was trying to develop there, Shuri, was that they trail by two Tasmania, and if they lose this end, it means they're chasing more than two with two ends to go, which is going to be difficult. They would need a multiple count. And yeah. That's hard, given the fact that South Australia have got two on the jack. Just trying now to broaden the target. Oh, there is a gap. 
Good. Well done. McKibben will have to attack. As you said, Steve, they have to score on this end. Remember, there's no dead end, so if anything, the Jack's going to come bottom right of screen looking at that. So he may come and try and draw to the spot on this backhand side of the rink. He will know that if they could score two on this end, probably will be good enough. Now McKibben, does he play delicate weight or does he come straight down the line? Flexes the shoulders. I'd be giving it the hardest <laughs> smack I could. <laughs> Stand back. Well, what can you say? A miss. <laughs> Six points. Maybe a block football. now. Tume has the best back bowl. He's got two on the jack. That's enough almost to wrap up the match. One would think. No, he's going behind or wide. Well, the difficulty now for McKibben is that if he does actually two down anyway, take get the jack out. To yard away to it, yes, just to crack him. Well, he'd still be two down. He killed it. If you have one go, you have another. The two bowls can go clean, Steve, without moving the jack. He's really correct on a bowl. He's had a full-blooded drive. Now he's playing delicate weight. Difficult shot. Good try. Well played, ready. Missed. So that's two. And with two ends to go in the match, the South Australians lead by four. And will that be enough? Crowd looks on. Two to play. Good one. It's a minimum of two, I suppose, for South Australia. Uh, sorry, for Tasmania required on this end. Yes, Steve, they have to score at least two to give themselves a chance. By chance, South, South Australia should score on this end. Players will be shaking hands. Come on. Yeah, you made it. Good. Nice pitch, mate. Oh, Wayne Manson needs to draw the shot here. Oh, that's a disappointing bowl when looking for a multiple count. Basically, McKibben's got to draw two, doesn't he? He's only got <laughs> two bowls to play, Steve, and they both have to count. Well, he needs one shot to keep the match alive. Oh. Need to get a slide off the front bowl to have any effect. That hasn't helped. Well, I think that's probably the worst result for him now because he's, he just can't make two, can he? Three blue disc bowls, all short of the jack. When you're looking for numbers, you must be behind if you fail. You swim hard. You're good, right? Well, he's got to draw a shot. Simple as that. So this, to stay alive in the match, if he fails, doesn't draw a shot here, the South Australians are through to the final. Too quick, and that's it. The South Australians will pick up two shots, and that'll take them to 21 15. So, well, interesting match. Who would have thought the way this match unfolded that that would be the end result?
but the South Australian pair, Wayne Rudiger and Ray Toome, are through to the final of this Super Pairs. Well, you got there, fellas. Congratulations. But, Wayne, that really didn't start uh, quite as planned, I'm sure. No, not quite. No, we got off with a rough start, but uh, Ray's played a couple of whoppers in the middle and we got to get over the line. How did you feel about the conditions? Were they a little uh, off-putting for you? Uh, it was a little bit different. I'm not used to playing over paint or anything like that, so yeah, it's a new experience. Did you feel after you got those two fours that uh, your own confidence lifted? Oh, most certainly. Most certainly. I started getting the game a bit then. Felt Ray up. Ray. Ray, what were your thoughts at 12-5 uh, down? Well, I thought we needed to do something to get back in the game. Unfortunately, we uh, got lucky and got a couple of fours and uh, put us right back in the game. It knocked them over a little bit and Wayne started to lead superbly and uh, good enough to get us over the line. I guess uh, two consecutive four counts are uh, unusual, really, in pairs. Oh, extremely unusual, particularly in a, a game like that where it's quite easy to put them all over the place, as you probably oh, noticed. But, uh, um, yeah, to get two oh, fours in a row and our confidence lifted and... Uh, as I said, Wayne started to lead superbly then, and uh, you know, we sort of won the game from there. Congratulations to you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that was one of those matches of two halves. After trailing 12 shots to five, the South Australian pair went on to outscore their opponents 16 shots to three, and in the end, you'd have to say they won it comfortably 21 to 15. That puts them into the Super Pairs final. They'll be up against Queensland. The game will be here at the Moama Bowling Club, and we hope you can join us for the Super Pairs final. I'm Steve Rebilliard for ABC Sport. Goodbye for now. You can see the final of the Australian Super Pairs between Queensland and South Australia tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. Stay with us now. Our children's programs begin with Bear in the Big Blue House. Don't get too uh, grateful, all right? That's my offer. If you want more, forget it. We understand each other? Absolutely. What? Getting what you want out of life. Lock and I are together and then I want you to accept it. It's a very tricky game. You're not going to break us up. That's right. I'm not going to break you up. Because you are. Don't get left behind. Head start. Sunday, 6.10.